Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. We've got two digests in today's program. First of all, of course, we've got English Digest, our program, and then within English Digest, we've got a program called News Digest, in which we discuss something that has happened in the news recently. And in today's program, we're talking about the death. Of the author of a famous cartoon series from Japan, I think it was also a comic book series, which was later made into an animated show called Chibi Maruko Chan, which in Chinese I believe. Oh no! It's an all English lecture. I cannot tell you the Chinese name, and I don't even know what the English name of this. I just know <laughs> the the Japanese name, Chibi Maruko Chan. Hey, if I say that in Japanese, does that count as sort of cutting into our all English lecture? There, yeah, it's kind of weird because we've got a lot of Japanese names in this lecture. It's not really fair. So technically, it's not an all English program, but you know what we mean, right? Yeah. So we're not going to have our Chinese teacher helping us. It'll just be us. Talking about this lovely woman who passed away a couple of months ago, sadly enough, and、uh, I'm not familiar with this particular cartoon, but I know Tom's heard of it. So、uh, let's get started. We'll talk about this lady's life, some of her work, and of course, some of these words you'll need to know. Miura Miki, better known by her pen name Sakura Momoko, passed away from breast cancer on August 15th, 2018, at the age of 53. Sakura was the creator of the manga series Chibi Maruko-chan, which captured the hearts of fans around the world. Sakura debuted as a manga artist in 1984 and began releasing Chibi Maruko-chan in the girls' comic magazine Ribbon. Two years later, the series proved hugely popular, and in 1990, it was adapted into an anime series that is still running today. Sakura also composed the series' original theme song, "Odoru Pon Pokerin," which became a huge hit the year it was released. Chibi Maruko-chan is loosely based on Sakura's own childhood experiences and mirrors events that happened in her life. The main character, Maruko. Is a third grader in Shimizu, Japan, and the series focuses on her home and school life. She is a depiction of Sakura as a child, and other characters such as Maruko's classmates Hamaji and Nagasawa are also based on Sakura's real childhood friends. The series provides a window into the lifestyle of typical Japanese citizens in the mid 1970s when Sakura was growing up. Fans across the world reacted with shock and sadness upon hearing the news of Sakura's death, but also showed their gratitude for her work. Viewers from Palestine, Egypt, Hong Kong, and more posted messages thanking her for creating the character. Ribon's editor in chief also expressed his grief and thanks to Sakura. As for the anime series, the production team behind the show has expressed its wish to go on making new episodes. Sakura's memory will continue to live on this way through the bright smile of little Maruko. Hi, guys. We're going to be talking about the creator of a beloved series, Chibi Maruko-chan, and she passed away a couple of months ago in August. I'm not very familiar with Japanese. Of course, Tom has studied a little himself. He's better at it than I am. A skoshi, just a little bit. So forgive me if I mispronounce things. It's not my language. So if you're a creator of something, it means you thought of it. You probably drew it. If you're an artist, you probably put pen to paper or sat down in front of a computer. And drew it using a computer. If you're into graphics, she was the creator of a really loved series. We call it beloved. You can also say beloved, but here I would say beloved. If you're talking about someone and you're using this word as a noun, I would say beloved. His beloved, but here it's actually an adjective. A beloved series, a series that was loved. Quite a bit, and I guess it's、uh, popular over here in Taiwan as well. Unfortunately, I never saw it. Tom just showed me a picture, and the character looks really cute. 
Yeah, I remember back in the '90s. It was、uh, really hot back then,、uh. and that's when some guy at the company I was working at at the time told me all about it. He said, "Yes, it's all the rage these days." Ying Tao Xiao Wanza, as you say in Chinese. I know I'm not supposed to speak Chinese, but、uh, that's what that guy, Mr. Fong, was his name.、Mm. I don't know where he is now, but in any case, yes, the author of this、uh, comic book series, the creator, passed away from breast cancer earlier last year, or at least in. August of last year, August fifteenth, twenty eighteen, when she was fifty three years old, and yes, she was the creator of that manga series. Some people say manga, which means comic book, of course, and of course that captured the hearts of fans around the world. Now let's talk about the author herself here, because she's the one who passed away. Chibi Maruko-chan is still alive in the hearts and minds of people. You can still read the comic books and watch the cartoon shows. I wanted to mention here in the first sentence, it talks about her having a pen name, Sakura Momoko. A lot of writers don't want to use their own names. Sometimes they actually just want to be left alone in public, and so if they use their own names, you probably would be able to. Recognize that name. Say they went to a doctor's appointment or something. You use the same name as your pen name. People would know who you were. So sometimes people pick a pen name to actually just keep their private lives private. But this name is interesting. I was telling Tom we do、um, some recording sometimes, and there's a Japanese character, and her name was Sakura too. And I wondered why. You guys probably know. I looked it up, and it actually means cherry blossom in English, Sakura. So seems like a pretty beautiful name to pick because those cherry blossoms are lovely. Yes, I remember years ago in Taiwan there was a film for film cameras. Called Sakura film. Oh, really? It later became Konica Color. Oh,、uh, you don't see film for cameras so much anymore. Everybody uses digital cameras these days. But I did want to also say that、uh, I guess if you're using English pronunciation, you'll pronounce this word as Sakura. And I think in Japanese it's more like sakura or something like that. And we would also say momoko if we're speaking English. But in Japanese, I think they pronounce it differently. And I can't tell you how I think they pronounce it because we are forbidden to speak any other language than English in today's program. But again, the author who had this pen name Sakura Momoko passed away from breast cancer. Last August, when she was just fifty-three years old, that's、uh, pretty terrible. There, it's young. It's pretty young、yeah. to be passing away. Hopefully, her, you know, her、uh, spirits can live on in her character there, because of course, her character and her manga series, manga series, has captured the hearts of fans around the world. They love it. It captures their imagination. They want to read more. Well, let's talk about the history of the author here. Sakura debuted as a manga artist way back. In 1984. So here, this is an interesting word here. Debuted, D-E-B-U-T-E-D. Debut can be a noun and a verb.、Mm. Usually, as a noun, it means something appears for the first time. Your debut as an actress, for example. And then we're making this a verb here to debut to appear for the first time. And so, in the past tense, we're adding ed. So it's kind of interesting because then this、uh, word. Only has two syllables. Debuted. She debuted or came out for the first time in a comic book back in 1984. Yeah, be careful. Don't say debutted. That would be no, incorrect. Weird. It's a French、Strange. word. That's why、Bizarre. it's weird. So if you debut, like Tom said, it's your first appearance as a performer, or maybe your first performance. Just depends on what you're doing. You could be a dancer, a singer, an actor, but you can also use it to talk about an album. Here we're talking about a comic magazine or her manga artist. She debuted as a manga artist in 1984, meaning that was the first time the public got to see her work. So if it goes public and it's the first time you've seen it, that's someone's debut. So if you release something, that also means you give it out to the public.、Uh, you can release a film, you can release an album, you can release. A book, so it's the first time it's out there in the public for purchase or for viewing. She was actually debuting a character in 
It's Chibi Maruko Chan in the girls' comic magazine Reborn two years later. So it took her about two years from the time she debuted. To come up with this character that was then published in a comic magazine, indeed. And I should also mention that we're using the name of the author as it would appear in Japanese. But if you're speaking English, you'd probably say the first name first and the family name later. So if you're talking to an American or somebody from England, you might say Momoko Sakura. But in Japan, they put the surname first, as you do here in Taiwan. So again, it's Sakura Momoko. And again, she came out as an artist in 1984. I guess she was drawing comics of different kinds of stories. But then Chibi Maruko-chan came out a couple of years later in 1986.、Mm-hmm. Now the series proved hugely popular, and in 1990, just four years later, it was adapted into an anime series that is still running today. Now anime here, anime. I guess you can pronounce it both ways here, but、uh, that is a short. For animation, I think in Japanese, which comes from English animation, which basically refers to anything that is moving on the screen.、It、would probably be a TV show. It could also be an animated movie. Yeah, but they're not real people, right? They're moving on the screen,、right. but they're drawn. So they could be drawn by hand, but not not so much anymore. People are using computers to do animation. So if you adapt something into something else, it means you're changing. Changing the form of something, we often use this verb to talk about a book that's adapted into a film. So it started out as a book, did very well, and people like to see things turned into film because they get to go to the theater and it's much more exciting to see a movie that way. That's one of their favorite books, perhaps. So it was adapted into a cartoon series or anime series that's still running today. If it's still running, it's Still means it's popular. It's still on TV or in the movies wherever they're showing it. It's still running today. That's pretty successful, I'd say. <laughs> it does sound very successful today. So again, it is、uh, still alive and well. As an anime series, and I suppose they're still releasing titles of the comic book as well. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. I could ask my daughter about that, but she doesn't really read those comics、mm. anymore. They're kind of for younger kids. She's much older than that now. But、uh, let's go on here and talk about the music here. Of course, when you watch those anime series. And the movies, of course, they oftentimes have a song, a catchy tune that is the theme song. So, Sakura also composed、mm. the series's original theme song, Odoru Ponpokorin. I hope I said that right, which became a huge hit the year it was released. So, my goodness,、uh, this woman was very talented. She not only could write stories in comic book form, but she was also a musician. She actually composed the theme song for this cartoon series. So, compose here as a verb just means you write music, you put it together, you figure out. What the instruments are going to do, and it probably includes also writing the lyrics to the songs. And of course, I'm not familiar with the song myself. I'm going to go online after the show. I'm sure I probably heard it somewhere. But of course, as you know, as I said, lots of cartoon shows and movies, the theme songs always become huge hits. Yeah, it's a song. Usually, when the program starts, to hear the song that goes along with it, that's a theme song. So she's a composer. Sounds like she understands music. That's cool. We're going to talk more about her and her life, and especially this series. But first, we're going to take a quick break. No Chinese teacher, but we'll be back. Welcome back, guys. We're talking about the creator of the series, Chibi Maru Kochan. The author, the creator, actually passed away a couple of months ago from breast cancer at the age of fifty-three. So we're talking about her life story, how she started out. She debuted as a manga artist in nineteen eighty-four, and two years later, she began releasing. This series that's gone on to become very popular, Chibi Maruko Chan, was in a girls' comic magazine first, but the series was 
really popular. We'll often use that phrase to prove to be popular, to prove to be a problem. That's just what it came to be after time passed. So it was adapted into an anime series, and it's still running today. So she's been quite successful. She's also a composer, a music composer, because she wrote the series' original theme song. Indeed. So, moving on to the next paragraph here, it says Chibi Maruko-chan is loosely based on Sakura's own childhood experiences and mirrors events that happened in her life. So, of course, she's writing about the adventures of this little schoolgirl、mm. in a school in a small town in Japan. And of course, the author herself went to school, and lots of things happened to her. So she had used. These experiences to write this comic book series. So we're saying that Chibi Maruko-chan is loosely based on her own childhood or her own childhood experiences, not. One hundred percent based on her childhood experiences, but loosely based on them. Maybe something happened to her, and if she tried to write that as a comic book, it might not be that interesting. So maybe she jazzed it up a little bit with some other plots, or maybe she took two or three stories and combined them into one or something、mm-hmm. like that. So、yeah. yes, it's loosely based on her own childhood experiences. It's not like a autobiographical, like one hundred percent, but kind of.、Uh, she sort of、uh, talks about some of. Of her stories, but not、uh, totally accurately. Yeah, so some of it's made up; she's created, and some is actually from her own life. Loosely just means not exact. It has some of her life in it, but not everything. Loose as an adjective just means something's not tight. You could actually use it to talk about your hair, ladies. If you put your hair up. It's not loose. If you let your hair down, your hair's loose. If the dog's loose, he's not on a leash and he runs around. So、uh, this is loosely based, not exact. It's not strictly based on her own childhood, and it mirrors events that happened in her life. If you mirror something, you kind of reflect something back. So it's almost like it's a copy of something. So it mirrors or shows events that happened in her own life. The main character. Maruko is a third grader in Shimizu, Japan, and the series focuses on her home and school life. Oh, this would be a very appealing to kids. Sure, they can relate to it. They probably had similar、Ooh. things happen to them, and they're probably inspired. They think, "Hey, if she did it, maybe I too could write about my childhood experiences, maybe in the form of a novel or a blog post or whatever."、Mm. And she is a depiction of Sakura as a child, and other characters such as Maruko's classmates Hamaji and Nagasawa are also based. On Sakura's real childhood friends. So here we've got the word depiction. That's a noun from the verb to depict. That just means it's how you show something, how you represent something, usually by drawing or in an animation or whatever.、It、could be in writing too. You can depict someone that way. You can describe them. So she is a depiction or a description, I guess, of Sakura herself when she was a child. And of course, she's got other characters in this comic. Book and this animated series, and in that series, of course, we've got the classmates Hamaji and Nagasawa. They're based on some real childhood friends that she had. Based on them, they're not exactly the same people,、mm, but again,、yeah. maybe borrowing characteristics from this person and another one and combining them into one particular character. It、says here the series provides a window into the lifestyle of typical Japanese citizens back in the mid 1970s. If you provide a window into something, it just means you get a look at something, you get a glance at something, and here we're looking at the lifestyle of Japanese citizens, the typical Japanese citizen back in the seventies. If you're typical, you have those qualities or characteristics of a particular type of person. If you're a typical American, you know you grew up in America. You like hamburgers, hot dogs. You probably like basketball, baseball, stuff like that. Typical, just your average Japanese citizen. And during the 1970s was when Sakura was growing up. So you kind of get to look back 
back in time. For a lot of our listeners, that's a long time ago.、Mm. So you could see what life was like back in the 1970s. Be pretty interesting because they did、Ooh. not have personal computers then. No beepers, no smartphones, no et cetera, internet. Et no internet. They had to use typewriters. They had to write by hand. You know. Oh my so, goodness. Yeah, so life wasn't so bad without those things, but、uh, you can probably get、mm-hmm. a glimpse into the lifestyle of typical Japanese citizens way back in the 1970s. And fans across the world reacted with shock and sadness upon hearing the news of Sakura's death, but also showed their gratitude for her work. Yes, this sounds kind of shocking and surprising to me that the author of this comic book series passed away so young.、Yeah. So they reacted with shock. My goodness. What is she doing? Dead? She was just getting started. We wanted to read more of her comic books, but unfortunately, she's gone. And because she's gone, people reacted with sadness, shock. Oh my goodness! How could that happen? And sadness. You're not happy about that at all. And they felt this way when they heard the news of her death. But at the same time, they showed their thanks or their gratitude or their appreciation for her work. That's what gratitude means. Your thank. Someone you're recognizing what they've done for you, so you're showing your appreciation or showing your gratitude, showing your thanks. She died especially young, if you consider、uh, how long a lot of these Japanese folks live. They eat very healthy food, lots of fish, and they're not fat like、mm. a lot of Americans are. So, yeah, she really did die at a very young age, fifty-three. Now, viewers, people who have seen her anime from Palestine, Egypt, Hong Kong, and more. So, here are just a list of different areas of the world who had become fans of her work. When she passed away, some of her viewers or fans posted messages. Probably on Facebook, if I'm going to guess, they posted messages online somewhere, on social media. It might have been Twitter. It could have been Instagram. There are lots of social media platforms that people use to post messages and post, you know, videos and photos, things like that. They were all thanking her for creating the character. Some of my favorite cartoon characters. Are still important to me because they represent part of my childhood, and they're connected with good memories. And I'm sure for some of her viewers, they feel the same way. It's kind of sad that、uh, somebody who provided them with hours of entertainment is gone. Right, they grew up with that character,、mm. so of course that character sort of reflected or mirrored their own childhood experiences.、Yeah. So it is a great loss that the author of the series is now gone. But、uh, we're lucky that her comic books and her cartoon shows are still being aired、Definitely. and will be for many years to come. Yeah, we use that phrase to live on.、Mm. So her work will live on. Far after you know her own life, so that's the cool thing about being an artist. You leave behind your work for people to always remember you. Wow, I guess that means no one's going to ever remember no, me then, because I'm not an、right. artist or musician or rock star <laughs> or whatever. But、uh, hey, she'll live on with this character. That's great. And of course, here going back to the original magazine in which she published her first story of Madoku-chan,、mm-hmm. the、uh, editor in chief of Ribbon also expressed his grief and thanks to Sakura. So here, grief is basically the same thing as sadness.、Mm-hmm. I'm experiencing grief at the death of my hamster. My hamster died, and I'm feeling really, really sad. Or my poodle died, so I'm really, really sad. I'm feeling grief right now. This word in particular is used for death. So、mm. when people pass away, you feel a lot of grief. Typically, you don't use it unless you're talking about someone's death. So、mm. be careful with that word. Sadness and grief. Grief is really、um, a much higher degree of being sad. But that's usually how you feel when you lose someone close to you. Okay, so as for the anime series, the production team behind the show has expressed its wish to go on making new episodes, even though she's gone. As for these two words together, guys, just means you're referring to this thing or you're referencing this thing. You can、uh, reference a person or a situation. Here we're referencing or referring to the anime series. So as for the series, what's going to happen to it? Well, the production team, like the artists, the producers, the director, 
those people behind the show they want to keep making the show even though she's gone. So they're going to try to、uh, continue making new episodes. When you have a series, of course, each program is considered to be one episode, and all of those episodes combined together. Are the series? So I hope they get to do that. Right, they'll continue to make new episodes、mm. in this series. Hopefully, we've got more and more of those episodes to look forward to in the future. So again, this is the production team. Part of the show、yeah. or behind the show, and of course they're going to continue to make those new episodes. Again, back to as for here.、Yeah. In case you needed an example here,、mm. I could say that hey, John and Lisa are going to Gaosheng for the weekend. But as for Peter, he's going to Geelong. He doesn't want to go to Gaosheng; it's too hot down there. He'd rather go to Geelong because it's cooler and it rains there more, and he just loves the rain. Yeah, so you could say, you know, I really love studying French. I love my French class and my English class, but as for my Chinese class, I really don't like it so much. So it's just another way to bring in a subject or a person when you're talking about those things, and maybe you're comparing and contrasting them. Yeah, the summer in Arizona is quite hot and dry. As for Taiwan, it's hot. But it's very humid, so it's a way to bring up another topic while you're comparing and contrasting. So, we hope that they get to make some new episodes. Here in the last sentence, it says, "Sakura's memory will continue to live on this way through the bright smile of little Maruko." It sounds like she has a really cute smile. I couldn't see her face, but she looks really cute from the picture you showed me, Tom.、Mm. So, I mentioned this earlier. If somebody's memory or someone's work lives. On it means although they have gone, they've left this earth, they've passed on to the next life. What they leave behind will be their work and also the memories people have of their work as well. Thank goodness we have memories of people living on in our hearts because it would be really hard to lose someone otherwise. It would be indeed, and、Ooh. I certainly am inspired by this. I remember when I was told about this years ago.、Uh-huh. My wife said, "Oh, I don't like that series. They are." Glo- Glorifying a mediocre girl who's just going to school. She's nothing special. But、uh, nowadays, she denies ever having said that. Oh, your wife? Yeah, but I have a pretty good memory. I'm pretty sure she did <laughs> say that. But now she just loves this character. Maybe Maruko didn't have a tiger mom. You know, a、mm. tiger mom's that mom that really pushes you to excel and to do well.、Mm, <laughs> well I don't be. know. I think maybe a lot of young girls can relate to her because she is just like them, just、it's、like the girl、typical. next door. Yeah. yeah, she's nothing special. She's Not the daughter of a tiger mom, so indeed that's something worth checking out. So yeah, tune in and see if those programs are still on the air. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation, and we don't need to hear from our Chinese teacher today because hey, you guys have pretty much understood every word we have said. So we're going to say farewell right now. Thanks for joining us, and please join us again next time. From all of us here, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie.、Goodbye. See you later.